Hello, Internet, and welcome to Weeb Theory, the show that's completely factual and 100% fire. Before we get started, this quality anime content right here is definitely worth subscribing to. Do it. Now. Thank you. So, have you ever considered exactly how much time you spend in constant Hunter Hunter Hell? For those out there who have completed the show, that's 49.3 hours down the drain spent watching from start to finish. Not too bad, right? But that's without the opening and ending. An additional 12.3 hours is spent jamming it out. However, we know most of you watching this aren't content with leaving things at just a single watch through. You've also taken 32 and a half hours to read the manga like the good little Hunter Hunter addict you are. And you've gone back to watch the show again because you've stolen someone's Netflix password and it's easier than having to choose something new. This is a grand total of 156 hours spent consuming just the official Hunter Hunter content. That's more than enough time to get off your ass and finally get some therapy. And yet, you still hunger for more. Fear not, for we are here to provide you with your fix of food. Let us guide you through our 12 course meal that we have so delicately prepared with our fewer than 12 brain cells. Please unfold your napkins and sip your wine in preparation for our obscure Hunter Hunter calculations. As you know, Gon and Killua are friends. Very good friends. In fact, so good that throughout the 2011 run of Hunter Hunter, Gon said Killua 156 times, while Killua said Gon 239 times. These numbers are quite astonishing considering there are only 148 episodes of the show. Killua also said his second favourite word, Baka, 22 times. The renowned Zodiacs, elites of the hunting world, have a penchant for dressing as their animal titles. And here at Sashmash, we have a penchant for finding out useless calculations, such as how tall each zodiac is in comparison with their animal. For instance, Periston is 178 centimeters tall, whereas an average rat is 7.5 centimeters tall. Thus, Periston is 24 rats tall. Mizai Storm is one cow tall plus a third, Kanzai is one and two thirds of a tiger tall, Pion is 7.5 rabbits tall, Jing is two bulls tall, and Cheadle is three poodles tall. Let us know in the comments how tall you are in units of your favourite animal. What is beans? How is beans? Why is beans? Beans. The one just about holding the Hunter Association together, his existence itself is a mystery, and his name gives rise to one crucial question. Is beans actually a bean? And more importantly, how many jelly beans can be made out of beans? We have already established that Pariston is 185 centimeters tall, and in shot, Beans appears to be about half that height. Beans' volumetric proportions appear to be roughly split into thirds between his head, torso, and limbs. Therefore, his total volume is around 60,000 cubic centimeters. A quick Google lets us know that the average jelly bean is 3.5 cubic centimeters. This means that Beans can be turned into just over 17,000 jelly beans if he is melted down and reformed. But what if Beans is just a bunch of beans in a suit? In that case, the University of Delaware tells us that a container of jelly beans will be about 30% filled with air due to the irregular form of beans. As such, 70% of Beans' total volume can be made up of beans. This comes up to just over 11,900 jelly beans. I kind of want to shake him like a maraca now. How could Killua possibly top saving the world from the Chimera Ants? Well, he could save it again by becoming an electricity generator. If Killua's Thunderbolt ability is equivalent to one average lightning strike, then that means he generates 15 coulombs of charge and 75 million volts, or 1.125 gigajoules worth of energy. This can be converted to 312.5 kilowatt hours, kilowatt hours being the standard unit of electricity usage. If a person uses 13.7 kilowatt hours per day, then Killua can provide electricity for just under 23 people per lightning strike. This is assuming that technology exists which can capture and convert 100% of a lightning bolt into mains electricity. So while Killua can't power York New, he could probably power Whale Island, and subsequently pass out from overexertion. As humans, it is only natural for us to enjoy spotting patterns. For instance, have you noticed that with every video of ours you watch, your mood elevates? Well, we have also noticed something in Hunter Hunter. There are a great variety of eyebrow shapes, and perhaps the shape of a character's eyebrows correlates directly with their personality. To test this theory out, we measured eyebrow angles using a protractor, and also determined how bold the actions taken by a character are. 
However, we realised after plotting this 2D graph that characters in Hunter Hunter can change a lot over time, so we added a variable that took this into account as well, temperamental stability. Behold this 3D plot. As you can see, there is a correlation. The more angular the brow, the more volatile the character is that it belongs to. You are welcome for this most important information. With the largest pipe in the world, Morale is undoubtedly the king of Vape Nation. But how much juice does he need to maintain the status? Let's find out. Leorio is 193cm tall and can be split into 8 equal sections 24cm in length, or 8 Leorio heads. Seeing Leorio stand next to Morel, we can determine that Morel is half a Leorio head taller, standing at 205cm. Morel's pipe is about as tall as he is and is therefore 15.8 times longer than a typical 13cm vape pen. A typical vape pen also has a 2ml liquid capacity, and as volume increases by a cube of the dimensional multiplier, we can calculate that Morel's pipe has a 7.9 litre capacity. If a vapour goes through 5ml per day, then Morel would smoke through 19.7 litres of liquid. This is equivalent to 4 and a third gallon jugs of milk, or 6 6 pinters, and it would also cost 750 British pounds. In any case, Morel's a hunter, he can afford any expensive habit. Have you ever wondered exactly how much the Phantom Troops tattoos would cost? After many hours of careful deliberation, we have concluded that the answer is in fact zero dollars. They stole them all. What about Crollo's obnoxious coat? You guessed it, zero dollars. He stole that too. And the price I'll pay for their sins? Eternal damnation. Gone is a school-aged kid. But Gon also went on an unsupervised adventure around the world which lasted between one and a half to two years. You may think that he has never done a day of school, but you'd be wrong. It is revealed that after he returns home in the manga, he has to catch up on all his missed homework. Quite a daunting task, but as you'll soon see, also quite manageable. That is, if Gon treats it as a full-time 40 hour per week job. If the average teen gets five hours of homework per week, and Gon missed between 60 and 80 weeks of school, this would total to three to four hundred hours in which he has to slave away. This would take seven to ten weeks at the intense full-time pace, or about six months being more relaxed. However, there is also passive accumulation of homework. With each week spent catching up comes an additional five hours of homework. Good luck, Gon. I'm sure you can do it. Illumi is the envy of hair havers worldwide, and if he wasn't an assassin, his career would definitely be in shampoo marketing. However, we are not here to discuss shampoo, but rather Illumi's hair itself. Illumi stands at 185cm tall, and using this as reference, we can determine his hair to be about 77cm long. If the average person has 100,000 hairs on their head, then lining up each of Illumi's hairs from end to end would create a strand that goes on for 77km. We can also approximate the annual expenses of hair products for Illumi's partner in crime. Despite his pallor, Hisoka doesn't take his appearance lightly. In fact, annually he spends $104 on hair dye, $139 on hairspray, and $75 for a salon hair repair appointment. This totals to $318 just for Hisoka's hair upkeep. Pause if you want to see the exact calculations. As promised in our Top 10 Killua Badass Moments video, it is now time to expose Killua's astonishing Chocobot addiction. Early on in the Heavens Arena arc, we come privy to the fact that the first floor reward is 152 Jenny, enough to just about cover a drink from a vending machine. Killua also boasts that he amassed 200 million Jenny and subsequently spent it all on snacks. If we assume that it is possible to purchase a Chocobot in a vending machine also for 150 Jenny, that would mean that Killua had bought 1,333,333 Chocobots. The imagery used in the show is quite fitting. He was practically swimming in snacks. As it had been four years since Killua last left the arena, that would mean he would have had to eat at least 913 Chocobots every single day to finish off his stash before running away from home for good with Gon. He really has a sweet tooth, huh? Thanks to insider information from our dedicated research team, we have determined exactly what Leorio stows in his briefcase and how much of that what he is able to haul. A standard size briefcase is 15.75 inches long, 12.5 inches tall, and 4.5 inches wide, with a carrying capacity of about 885 cubic inches. 
we know that Leorio is constantly on the grind for Moolah, and we also know that a stack of $1,000 bills is 4.3 inches tall, with the dollar bills themselves being 6.14 inches long and 2.61 inches tall. This means that an impressive 12 stacks can be comfortably hidden away. That's $12,000 by the way. And of course, we cannot forget Leorio's namesake, the Oreo cookie. With a diameter of 1 and 3 quarter inches and a thickness of just over half an inch, an enormous 441 Oreos can be kept on hand, or rather in the briefcase, for emergency on-the-go snacking. This thought came to me at 3am, like all the best ones do. How many people would Genthru need to explode to decimate Greed Island? Could Greed Island actually have been at risk? The short answer is sadly no, and here's why. We're told through the manga that Greed Island is about the size of Hokkaido, which is about 83,000 square kilometers. A circle of this area would have a radius of 162.5 kilometers. A 100 megaton blast would have an effect on everything within a radius of 92 kilometers. Therefore, we can estimate that 200 megatons of blast yield is required to significantly impact Greed Island. Because of maths, 200 megatons is equivalent to 837 petajoules of energy. If Genthru can vaporize a person, that would mean he can generate and focus attacks of 3 gigajoules of energy. Overall, this means that Genthru would need just under 279 million people to destroy Greed Island. Good luck with that, buddy. And this, kids, is why you should stay in school and pay attention to your math classes. You never know when you'll have to bust out your calculator to satisfy a numerical itch for the series you're obsessed with. In any case, we hope you enjoyed this lengthy dinner. You can show your faithful chefs your thanks in the form of hitting the like, subscribe, and bell buttons. And also by leaving a 5-star Yelp review. Until next time, Sashmash out. Now go.